Hi guys, good evening. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I will be discussing what I thought of the latest episode of AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. I just got done watching the second episode. Oh, it's got me hooked. It's got me intrigued. I'm excited. And I'm going to talk about it for too long and too uh, too much. So before I keep going, of course, please be warned, as with all my episode review videos, this is going to be a spoiler-filled episode review. Again, if you're not caught up on Fear the Walking Dead by this episode or by the last episode, which was the season premiere, do not keep watching or listening as I will be going and discussing spoilers. So you have been warned. That being said... So, great, solid episode. We've got a new established uh, story and a new threat and then uh, some interesting tidbits thrown in here and there. So for starters, I love what they did. They immediately explained through dialogue just how long of a time jump it has been between now and the season three finale last year. To remember, to just give you guys a quick recap, the season three finale is when Nick blew up the dam, saving his family in the process, but also just flooding the whole area. And we were left not knowing, with the exception of Madison, we were left not knowing the fate of all of our characters. Uh, but clearly they all found each other. And everybody's alive and well. Well, they're alive. I don't know if they're going to be well for too long. And uh, I guess it has been about a year since they have established and have been living in this baseball diamond. And they've turned it into a pretty cool little farming community, kind of like what Rick and his group did back in season four of uh, The Walking Dead. You know, it looks like uh, the showrunners uh, took a page out of that uh, out of that show. They took one of the best seasons and applied it to uh, this uh, to this show. And I like that. I think that's pretty cool. I, it's an interesting concept too, taking shelter in a big uh, a sports arena or stadium because that actually makes a lot of sense. Like it's surrounded in all directions and uh, walled off and you can see everything coming from every direction and uh, lots and lots of space for people to occupy and lots of space to grow food and keep animals. So good choice, good choice. Um, and then what else was interesting is that they did this before and now thing where I think the black and white the black and white stuff like was like we like what we had with the season premiere last week and at the end of this episode we are seeing the present so this is the present that's why morgan was able to leave virginia and find himself uh in texas not necessarily so soon but my point is is that the the timelines may not be necessarily synchronized they may, may not be on the exact same timeline here and I think that's kind of cool because we don't know how much time has passed between what was happening when the episode was in color and when it was happening when it was black and white so this episode threw like one or two time jumps at us and I'm curious just how long it's been well now we know how long it's been between this and the season finale last year so that was good to know um, I love the fact that Madison's taken charge and that uh, she and her kids are kind of like the leaders and protectors of this place. They seem to have a pretty good, solid community so far. I love seeing my man Strand. I like seeing Strand in action, providing his uh, smart-ass remarks and uh, trying to avoid uh, the one guard who's hitting on him. That's pretty funny. But uh, I love uh, seeing these characters uh, so uh, prospering so well, like Nick and Luciana and uh, Madison just watching over everybody, going on that run, bringing Naomi back. And Jenna Elfman's doing a great job, by the way. You know, I was thinking the last thing I would have seen her in was a comedy back on either ABC or CBS. It was called Accidentally on Purpose. And that was almost... Oof. Well, I mean, I'm sure she's done stuff since then, but that was almost 10, 9 years ago. That was the last thing I at least saw her in. And uh, it's interesting to see her in a more serious, dramatic role in a more serious show. And uh, I like it. I think she's an interesting new character. And hopefully she'll prove to be more of an ally. And uh, speaking of allies, I uh, was very shocked with that little Charlie twist they did. Because when the guy Mel starts to talk about Nick and the Weevils, I'm like, oh, okay, he overheard and listened to their radio communication because Nick uh, told revealed all that stuff to Madison and Alicia over the radio. Oh, the turnips have got Weevils. We need to destroy the crop or something. So I'm like, oh, okay, this guy overheard that radio conversation. Nope. They had themselves a little spy planted right there in the stadium. 
And uh, I don't know if, uh, I don't think he's her dad or anything. And I don't know if she's there with these guys willingly or if they're threatening her. But, you know, she didn't seem too scared of him when she went out back to them. And uh, he confirmed all the information she had provided to Madison. And uh, ugh, guys just gave me the creeps. I just wanted to sock him in the face for acting so smug like he was going to come out on top. But Madison stood her ground and that's why we love her. That's why we love her. Um, but, uh, I, I also love the name. I love the name of the villains, you know, cause your villains have got to have cool sounding names or intri intriguing, interesting names. Negan, the governor, the saviors, uh, the cannibals, a terminus, the claimers. I love the claimers. These guys, uh, cause they refer to them in the final scene of the episode, they call them vultures and it's extremely fitting considering what their habit seems to be, where they show up outside of a community, wait for people to die and wait for things to go to hell and then they move in and pick over the remains and that seems to be exactly what their play is for now but it seems like with that final scene where our characters were holding morgan and his new allies at gunpoint it seems like there's uh, been a bit of a time jump and no sign of madison which is a bit alarming uh, i hope uh, she's okay and uh, not dead because that would really suck if she never gets to meet morgan because i was really hoping at least those two would meet each other because morgan would have the best of both worlds he would have met both main central characters from both shows rick and madison that would have been pretty cool and hopefully at some point he will so let's not rule madison out yet but i do like the name of the vultures that is very a perfect post-apocalyptic gang name and, uh, you know, I wonder if uh, they were indeed responsible for that little tent area, what happened at the oil tanks. And what exactly is the game, or the gain, I should say, of planting flags in different mile markers? Like, that was another mystery solved, sort of. But they didn't really explain why they did it. I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure. But I'm sure we'll get more answers. Overall, great episode. It has got me really excited for the rest of the season. And another thing that I really loved about it is that, as I saw in the opening credits, it was written by the two new showrunners, uh, Goldberg and Shameless, I believe their names are. They are the two new showrunners. They're the two top dogs. I believe uh, Scott M. Gimple uh, appointed or picked them himself. And uh, they're overseeing the show now, this season, starting with this season. And so far, so good. They're doing a great job, as is everybody. So keep it up, guys. This was a fun episode, and it had plenty of gory, cool Walker kill moments, uh, interesting new characters and new developments, and a few twists here and there, and a couple of potential time jumps. And I'm excited to see what the next episode brings us. All right, guys, what did you think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please leave your thoughts, opinions, and your feedback down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this season of Fear the Walking Dead as much as I am. And uh, please be sure to subscribe for more episode reviews and future content from this channel. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Fear the Walking Dead premieres new, sun new episodes every Sunday night on AMC. Don't miss it. Have a good one. And, of course, until next time, may the force be with you.